Well, good morning and welcome to Central Church. We are a Jesus Church where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, but where everyone is loved, and of course, anything is possible. Can you believe it? First Sunday of the new year. Happy New Year. Uh, I hope this new year will bring you blessing and joy and filled with the presence and the closeness of the Lord. Uh, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for a brand new year with all of the things that lay ahead of us. Uh, thank you that we know that we can leave ourselves and our times and everything uh, in your hands because you are our God and you have always promised uh, to take care of us. Uh, thank you for another year. Uh, we, we hope in expectation, Lord, that it will change and that this whole COVID situation will change. But we thank you that we may also pray for that. Pray that you will take care of that, but also take care of those folks who are struggling with this, who are in hospitals and ICUs. Pray for the folks who are taking care of us. Help us, Lord, to be gracious uh, and caring toward each other as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, would you agree with me if I said that relationships are, are some of the most amazing things in our lives? But at the same time, it's also one of the most fragile things in our lives because they, they break so easily. And, and unfortunately, there are some people that are so good at this, at the breaking thing. And they, they just leave pain and hurt and wrecks uh, behind uh, in, in their dust. And I mean, it, it happens in so many ways, uh, in, in deeds, in actions, and sometimes in inactions, uh, in, in words. Whatever it is, the, the, the painful effect is always the same. But I don't want to talk about that painful stuff. I want to talk about the flip side of this. And, 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 and I want to talk about how we can become that healing balm and how we are that healing balm that changes this instead of breaking, uh, bringing uh, together. To help us with that, I'm going to take you to a chapter that you know off by heart, I'm sure. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And only verses 4 to 7. I'll read verse 8 a little later. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So whenever I read this, this, this chapter, uh, I always, I always get this image in my head of, of these boxes that we get. And then on the boxes, they often have this label that says, fragile, handle with care. And, and the moment we see this label, we know that, that we wouldn't throw this box around or kick the box around or drop the box. Uh, we, we work carefully with this box. We take care of this box because we know that the contents might break really easily. Somehow I think Paul is saying to us, perhaps we should put these labels on every person. Fragile. Handle with care. Because we break so easily. And when Paul talks about this breaking, he says, there's a way in which we stop this. And the only way in which we heal, in which we bring together, in which we don't drop the box, in which we don't break the box, is when we have God's love that lives in us. Because love is that which changes everything. And we're asking, how do we do that? 
So let me just do one of the verses with you of what we read. The first thing Paul says that changes all of this, it says, love is patient. Now, if I want to try and explain patience to you, just listen to this sound for one second. Okay, it's not a fun sound, right? Um, and, and I did this because I, I wanted to use this as an example of how sometimes things, people, situations can work on our nerves and then scratch our nerves a little bit like that. And, and, and it makes them a little raw. So I'm driving in the car and I'm on my way to work and the traffic is, is kind of miserable and I left house, the house at, at, with quite a speed going out the door and, and people are being rude in the traffic and I'm going to be late for work and I get into work and, and I'm all flustered and then someone just starts pushing my buttons a little bit and they say a little something and, and the first reaction is, I want to go back at them and I want to say things back at them and I want to hurt them uh, uh, just to leave me alone because I don't have the patience for that right now. Problem is when the words are out, we can't easily take them back. And instead of keeping together, it breaks, right? Because the problem with emotions, and I've said this a million times before, emotions don't think. Emotions just react. But love is not just a feeling. Love is an act of my will. So before I say those words, before I let them go out of my mouth, because once they're out, I can't hit the backspace or the delete button. They're out and they're going. Before I say those words, let me think about what are they going to do? Where are they going? What are they going to cause in that person's life, in my life, in my relationship with that person? When I'm at home and I feel miserable and the kids are not good and the baby is crying and I want to lose it and I want to say all kinds of things, don't do that. Fragile. Handle with care. Because every time I tell that kid you're naughty and you're so-and-so and you're this and that, you know what happens? It goes into that little heart and that little life and it just breaks that little heart and that little life, and they start living up to what I'm telling them, who they are. If I have no patience. You know, there's an old English word, it's called long-suffering. If I don't have the time to, for a moment, weigh the words before I let them out, I'm dropping that box. Second way in which we can bring healing, uh, says Paul, love is patient, but love is also kind. And again, if I think of an example of this, when, when the kindness of God's love comes into my life, let, let me use an example, silly example, but the best I can think of. When the love of God's, uh, the kindness of God's love comes into my heart, it changes my life from that of a bumper car. And you know how bumper cars work, right? The, the whole thing about a bumper car is to bump everything out of your way so you are the one who is doing this and you are doing good and staying away from those who are bumping you, but bump as many as you can. When the kindness of God's love comes into my life, it changes my life from being a bumper car that bumps everything out of the way into a harbor. Because a harbor is a place of safety from the storms and from the breakers and from the waves. It is a place where I can, where I can shelter. It is a place where I know that I am safe and I am taken care of and I am good and everything is good in the harbor. That's what kindness does to my heart. Or maybe another image. If there's no love and kindness in my heart, I'm like this burning wildfire that just burns and I leave everything in my wake. But once the kindness of God's love comes into my life, uh, I'm like this wood fire that burns in the fireplace. 
that gives me warmth from the cold winter outside that is inviting and relaxing and where I can just breathe and let go for a moment. Because you see, here's the thing about, about kindness. Kindness is not about me changing other people. Kindness is that which changes me. So I become that, that harbor magnet that attracts those who need a safe place, those who need a harbor, those who need to be taken care of. Turns me into this warm, loving person that gives where people want to be, that attracts. Then Paul says a third thing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Boy, that's a mouthful. And it's scary when we read that. But I wonder if you, if you knew this. But, but when all of us are born, do you realize that we're all born with this, with this big old bullseye target on our back that says, shoot me. And that's exactly what life will do. Because in this world, we are taught that we need to get ahead. And how do I get ahead? By shooting those in front of me so I can get to the front and I can boast that I am the best and I have done this and look at me and look who I am says the word love is not jealous doesn't see that target and wants to shoot it or boastful or proud because the problem is this because we always want to be in front because we always want to show who I am and that I'm the best what happens We live people out of our way. We talk people out of our way. We shove people out of our way and we walk right over them. Or we just pull that bow and let go and hit that target. Fragile. Handle. With care. See, here's the thing. When God comes into my life and changes my life, changes me. Changes me to look at someone else and instead of wanting to run over them or instead of turning my back on them or instead of wanting to pull that arrow and shoot it at them, I'm the one who goes and I open my arms and I say, may I love you? Instead of running away, I'm the one who comes and said, can I wash your feet? Can I give you a cup of cold water? How can I serve you? Because love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't run over people. It doesn't look down on people. It actually goes down on its knees like the one that we know. And it washes feet. And when love comes in my heart, it changes my language. My language is that of humility and care and compassion. And my life is that of giving and not comparing, of sharing and not taking, of loving and not seeing a target. And when God says, go do this, he doesn't send a superhero to do that. He just sends us. Just regular, normal people like you and me. Let him go with a gentle cup of water.
and say, I love you. I told you I would read the last verse, verse 8, last, and here it is. It says, Paul, because prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. But love, love will last forever. So when you go out there, read the label. It says, fragile, handled with care. Amen. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your unconditional love for us. For through your love, you did not turn your back, but we just celebrated that. We celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ into this world. Through your love, Lord Jesus, you came and you sought us, the broken and the needy and the lost and the fragile. And you put us together again with your love and then you send us out to go live this love. Help us in this year that lies ahead of us to be patient and kind, and not jealous, and boastful and proud or root, but to love. For the greatest of all of these that will last forever is love. Amen. It was wonderful again to spend this uh, first Sunday of 2022 with you. So as you go into the new year, God's promise, the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, love of God, our Father, and that amazing fullness, closeness, indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen.